So coming up next, I would like to welcome uh, uh, Richard Cody Nichols to talk about the ghost of the forest, the search for the mysterious Okapi, and I'm going to go ahead and raise a glass right at the beginning in recognition of the fact that this is his third and therefore fellowship significant talk. So welcome back. Wonderful. Okay, so the ghost of the forest, the search for the mysterious Okapi, the animal that whenever I describe it to people, when they ask me what my favorite animal is, is always met with, that's not a thing. <laughs> but it is. I worked for half a year at Disney World in Orlando, Florida, and the best part of working there was that in Animal Kingdom, they have a real Okapi. And I finally got to take a selfie of me flipping off the camera, showing people that it was indeed a real animal. So... The Okapi, also called the African, the African Unicorn for reasons you will soon see, um, also known as the Ghost of the Forest for how elusive it was. Uh, a friend of mine calls it Okapi My Cappy. It is, uh, <laughs> it is uh, located only in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, formerly known as Zaire, and the Western world did not know about this animal until the 20th century, until 1901, but it was vaguely known for uh, thousands of years in Africa. Now, uh, right here is a picture from uh, Persepolis, modern-day Iran, of a gift from the king of Ethiopia to the ruler of Persepolis, a gift of an okapi. So this is the earliest known record we have of this animal being depicted. Uh, the name okapi actually comes from a couple words from an African tribe called the Lis. So the, uh, Af the words... Uh, Oka, meaning cut, and kapi, which is a certain design of an arrow that they would use. Now, bark was wrapped around those arrows, so when the people would burn them, it left marks resembling the legs. Speaking of which, I should actually describe what the okapi is for those who might not be aware. It's an animal that I guarantee many, pe many of you have seen pictures of, but not, not, might not know of the name. It has the body of a horse, the legs of a zebra, and the skull of a giraffe. Bear with me. It's real, I promise. Now, uh, the story of the Okapi begins with this gentleman, Sir Harry Johnston, but even before him, it really truly begins with the finding of the African explorer, Dr. Livingston. Uh, many of you are aware of the story of Dr. Livingston, but when he was discovered and brought back home, there had been rumors of this mysterious animal called the Okapi, or uh, it went by various different names, but every time people would come back to Britain and talk about it, they were told, no, 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 this can't be a thing. They, uh, it started becoming, being called the African African unicorn because of how just not possible it was. Now, this gentleman, Sir Harry Johnston, he talked to the gentleman who found Dr. Livingston, and he uh, was being told of these rumors. And then he was tapped by the Belgian government to go find uh, these missing pygmies from this pygmy tribe who had been stolen by, I kid you not, a traveling circus to be exhibited because of how strange they looked. Now, he found these missing pygmy, uh, pygmies and brought them back to their tribe. And as a way to say thank you, the pygmies knew that Johnston was looking for this okapi. They told him, yes, it's real. And they gave him a couple pieces of hide from the okapi just to show like, we know what we're doing. And then over the years, uh, Johnston kept doing favors for the pygmy tribe. And as a way of saying thank you, the pygmies kept giving them things that they owned that were made of okapi. So they had instruments that were made of okapi hide. They had a skeleton. And eventually, they gave him a whole okapi corpse that he was able to bring back to Britain to say, see, I'm not lying. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> sorry. And... Um, he was finally able to bring it back, so officially the okapi became recognized as a real animal in 1901. Now, uh, traveling with the pygmies, he was able to find different aspects of the animal, because at first, before he had a real corpse of the creature, he thought it might be horse-related or zebra-related because of the stripes. But when he saw the skull, he realized that, in actuality, the okapi is the only living relative of the giraffe. There were others in the Ice Age, but currently it's only the okapi and the giraffe. And they do have very uh, interesting similarities. One that I found very funny, I didn't find out till this morning though, is uh, when they drink, they have to bow their front legs and it looks very silly. I don't know if uh, giraffes or okapis can ever feel shame, but I think they would when they have to drink water because it looks very embarrassing. 
Now, this is the first uh, depiction of an okapi. This is from 1901, from Johnston himself, and the scientific term for the okapi is called the Okapia Johnstononi, and it's to honor Johnston. Uh, this is actually a photo of a fully grown okapi with a pygmy. Now, okapis can get pretty tall. They can get six to seven feet in height when standing up. But also, this is, he's just a very small man because he was part of the uh, pygmies. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so th now what I find so fascinating about the okapi is that they have so few natural predators. And they're, they're herbivores. But the reason they have so few natural predators, I kid you not, their natural defense is just because they're shy. They are so damn shy. And their ears move independently so they can hear predators coming from so far away. The only time they are caught by their only natural predator, aside from humans, of course, because we're terrible, uh, the leopard, is because leopards love to sleep in trees. And leopards will sometimes wake up in the branches, see an okapi below them, and think, oh, what luck, and just drop down on top of them. That is literally the only times they are caught by leopards. Um, they, they've, they're pretty much like nature's Photoshop, this animal, because they have so many weird traits. Uh, they have these special hormone glands in their hooves where they can leave little uh, special scents as they're walking so their babies can follow them. Uh, they, they don't really stick together in groups like giraffes do. The only time they do is when the mother is close to their baby for a couple months, and then they abandon them. But uh, some people think the markings on their back are there so their uh, baby can follow them and know who their mother is, because each uh, okapi's marking is different, like a fingerprint. And so the okapi babies can recognize their mom and see them in darkness, and it also helps them blend in with the foliage. Their fur is very oily and velvety because they live in a rainforest type area, so it does help the water keep off their backs. Now, the, the okapi babies are adorable, uh, and they're also very interesting because they need to keep away from predators. So they're ready to go just as soon as they're out. Literally 30 minutes after they're born, they are able to stand and walk. And I thought this was so fascinating. When they're born, they don't poop for eight weeks. <laughs> because apparently leopards love the taste of baby okapis more so than adult okapis. And they make sure to hold everything in for eight weeks, six to eight weeks, because pooping makes it easier to find. <laughs> Now, here's uh, one of my favorite parts of the okapi. They uh, do kind of have, have the uh, head of a giraffe. Their tongue is, and this is outside the mouth, by the way, not just in general, but outside the mouth, their tongue is 18 inches long. And they use it to clean their ears, to clean their eyeballs. And this morning, I literally found out when they're going through dense foliage, they can kind of like tuck the eyeballs into their sockets so branches don't hit them. They're just adept at making sure to be able to run away from everything. <laughs> now, before I get to uh, one of my last slides, I do want to give a little bit of a palette cleanser. When I was looking for Okapi images, I stumbled onto this shirt that, if anyone is looking to buy me Christmas gifts, I need this shirt so badly in my life. <laughs> it, I, don't even, I don't know why this is a thing. But um, we're going to go into a little bit of a dark territory here because we're going to go into a little bit of the modern day because Okapis, um, there are only 10, less than 10,000 of them left in the entire planet. They only live in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And they're facing a tough time because there is an Okapi uh, uh, wildlife reserve in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Oh, another little palate cleanser image, so everyone's going to be okay. But... Um, there was an incident back in uh, June 24th, 2012, where families of elephant poachers who were very angry at some of the workers at the Okapi Wildlife Reserve, um, they sought retaliation because some of the workers there had gotten their uh, husbands and fathers put into jail for elephant poaching. So they invaded the wildlife reserve, killed 14 Okapis, and six people who worked at the center. And again, there are less than 10,000 okapis left. So, and that's not counting, or that is counting the ones who are in zoos. Uh, please, if you can donate any money or anything at all to help these beautiful, wondrous creatures, anything is appreciated. These creatures are wonderful, and I really hope they do get to stay for generations to come. And now, as a way to say thank you, uh, here's a picture of an okapi butt to make everyone <laughs> a lot happier. But I want to end with a toast to the okapi. This is a toast to the odd ones, the mishmashes, the ones who are so strange and continue to be strange even when the world is telling you that there's no possible way you can even exist to the Okapi. Thank you.